Hello, welcome to Mo Craig. I'm Chris, and today we're going to be talking about programming with MIDI. So I'm sure everybody is aware what MIDI is, but I've got my uh, OPZ set up here with a MIDI controller connected to it, right? And with MIDI, we can send information from a controller uh, to a device um, to, to, to play notes, to alter parameters, to do... do things like pitch bend and send all sorts of other information. And it's not just between devices like MIDI controllers and, and you know, the OPZ here, but it's, you know, devices can send between one another, computers can co communicate and other things, sequencers, they can all chat to each other, buy and send information and commands to each other using MIDI, right? And it's all sent down the wire. And the subject of, uh, you know, this, this video is, how does that work? And can we play around with it? Can we make computer programs that can can speak to devices as well? And I'm just going to switch this over just now because it's going to be, uh, we're going to be using that a little bit later on. But let's get started then. If you want to work along with this, you'll need Python 3 installed. And there's a link to uh, the Anaconda Python distribution um, in the, uh, which is, a, you know, a, a package for managing, basically it's a sort of distribution of Python. Every, it installs that and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can install that or, you know, there's different ways you can install it as well. But there's a link to the description about that. If you don't have it currently installed, I recommend that way. Um, also, um, the Python RT MIDI library, and I'll show you how to install that in a little second. And this is a, a wrap around a, a C library that enables us to be able to communicate with MIDI devices. And then a MIDI device, right? And this can either be a hardware device like the OPZ there, or it could be a software device on your com computer. And first of all, I'd like to say thanks to this person, Dave Van Brink. I don't know who they are, but they wrote this great web page ages ago, which condenses down the MIDI spec, and I've used it extensively. And again, there'll be a link to that in the description. You can take a look at this and find out more about MIDI yourself. So what is MIDI? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and it is a standard um, that is defined that, that enables electronic musical instruments to communicate with one another and computers to communicate with them and other devices. And this will send no information and start and stop information and clock signal and stuff all between to, between your musical devices. Ultimately, though, the, the MIDI messages themselves that are being sent along the wire are just um, binary numbers like this, right? These are bytes, um, so a group of eight binary digits or bits, um, and they're sent down the wire and they're interpreted by the device. And the device has been programmed to understand the MIDI specification so it knows what these messages mean. So let's look at that in a little bit more detail here. So this is the binary representation here. Now remember, this is just a number in base two. Um, that corresponds to, um, in, in decimal, uh, 147. This is the sort of integer representation of it here. Um, or we can think about them in hexadecimal. So this is base 16, and this is actually very handy and kind of uh, useful for understanding MIDI. And what this, um, um, what this means is that it's, like I said, base 16, it goes from zero um, all the way up to 16, and that's like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then A, B, C, D, E, F. And so here, for example, C corresponds to 12, um, B corresponds to 11. Um, and it's a, it's a, it seems sort of awkward, why would you have that? But actually, it's a really nice way to describe bytes of data, because um, four binary digits, a nibble, so half of a byte, can be represented with one hexadecimal digit, because this goes up to 16, uh, or 0 to 15, and the hexadecimal digit goes 0 to 15 as well, right? So you can you can sort of say what's going on in the, the first part of the byte and the second part of the byte using hexadecimal, and we'll see why that's useful later on. Now, I've highlighted these in red, um, this beginning part and blue here. These are, this number, the first number here, represents a special uh, a special command. Uh, this is this is called the status, which is sending a command down to your device. And the second part is the message or the, sort of the payload, how to execute this command, right? It's like a sort of function and then variables that are inside that function. Um, we can have a look as well. The, the command is broken down into two parts, or at least the command that I'm showing you just now, which is the note on. So uh, note on, the first nibble here is, this, is the status, the, the actual command type. So this is note on nine corresponds to that. And then the second part corresponds to the channel. And this is why it's useful to think about it in hexadecimal. So you can see the channel here. Channel three is, is uh, sorry, number three here corresponds to channel four. And it's because it starts zero is equal to channel one, uh, one is equal to channel two, etc. So, and all the way up to, to 16 channels. 
And then after that is um, the pitch, and then a number representing the pitch. Uh, and this is useful to think in an integer. Again, these are all the same, remember. They're just different representations of the same number. Um, but it's useful to think in terms of um, the integer here because uh, you might be familiar with the MIDI notes. 60 corresponds to middle C. So if you take 12 off of that, because it's in semitones, you'll be down to 48. That's that's an octave below, so it's the C below middle C. If you add 12 on up to 72, that's the C above middle C, right? So you can define all of the, the sort of sta standard notes on uh, the Western scale using this. And then the last one is uh, velocity. So it's how heavily you've pressed the note, right? And some some devices, most devices will, will sort of recognize they'll be velocity sensitive. So this is the structure of one MIDI message, but there's lots of different types of MIDI message. And just I'll point out again that this first digit here corresponds to the command, and then the second one to the channel. If you look at some other MIDI messages, this is not all of them by any means, but these are some ones that we're going to be using, some ones that might be interesting. The first, the first digit again corresponds to the command type, and then we've got the channel in here, right? So this can be anywhere from zero to F, which is from channel one to fifteen uh, to sixteen, sorry. And we've got things like note on and off, and we can send the pitch and velocity, like I was saying. Uh, key pressure, so this is sort of after touch. Uh, controller change, which is when I was altering the filter there using the MIDI device. Um, this is what I was varying using the controller. Uh, program changes to set presets. Channel pressures, like uh, I've never actually seen this on any of my devices, but apparently it's like a whole device pressure uh, or pitch bend. Uh, so these are some of the, the, the MIDI messages that you can send. Now let's actually have a go messing around with these ourselves. So I'll bring up my terminal here. Hopefully you can all see that. And uh, so I've already got Python installed in this computer. Again, if you install it um, using the link below, you'll end up with something similar to mine. If you install with um, Anaconda Python, you will have um, an interpreter called IPython available. And if you start that, you'll see the version of Python that you might have. Now I've got 3.8, but this should work with 3.9, 3.10, no problem at all. Um, so let's exit out of that there. Um, first thing you want to do is install um, python-rt midi, and this will install the package that's required to communicate, to send midi message and set up connections to midi devices. So that's good, we've got that there. And then I'm just gonna go into the interpreter here. I'm using IPython. You can basically run Python commands interactively in this. IPython is a bit nicer than the normal Python interpreter. It, it gives you sort of tab completion and all sorts of things like this. So to start with, I'm gonna import time, which is a part of the standard library in Python, which is used for, you know, um, sleeping and having delays and working with time. This will be important later on. Uh, and then RT MIDI. And then I'm going to set up a sort of output for the, um, for the, the um, a MIDI output, and we'll see in a second how that works. So if we do tab completion, we can see there, there's this class MIDI out and we can instantiate it. And now we've got an output device. So let's see ports is equal to output. And let, uh, if we go yeah, here is here, get ports, uh, we can run this. And if we take a look at what's inside that ports, then we can see that currently connected, there are two MIDI devices. So this is the kind of standard wavetable synthesizer that comes with, with um, Windows. So you can you could actually send messages here. And there's also the OPZ here, which is device one, and this is device zero. So let's co connect to device one. So if we go out dot open port, and this will connect and we want device one, right? That's our OPZ here, device one. Uh, and we connect to it. And then if we go with out, so this is a context manager in Python. When you do this with block, it'll set stuff up and then break it down once you're finished. And so this is what, uh, this is how we're, we're, we're dealing with this just now. We're gonna define a couple of messages. So to start with, we'll do note on, and we're gonna define it in hexadecimal. And we want nine, so this is our command. So that, if you remember, that's note on. I'm gonna send it to channel, actually channel five again. Uh, it's It starts at zero, it's channel one. So four is channel five, and that corresponds to the, base channel and um, the OPZ. And then I'm going to send uh, 48 to it and we'll just do a velocity of 100. And then we'll make another, so this is a Python list incidentally, again just a list of numbers here um, and we can mix and match hexadecimal representations or binary. So it's useful for me personally, it's useful to have the first one, the command, as hexadecimal, but the other ones it's kind of easier for me to remember if I 
if I have the uh, integer representation. So again, we want the note off event. Uh, oh, we have the wrong thing here. So eight is note off, right? Um, channel four again, we're sending it to, and we want note eight forty eight to turn off. And then we don't have like um, a note off velocity on this device, so we'll just set this to zero. And then uh, we can send out um, and then send message. Yep. And then we'll do note on to start with, right? And then we can do a sleep, time.sleep here. That's why we imported this library. We'll wait for one second and then uh, we'll go out dot send message and we'll send a note off event, right? So what should happen is that when we run this in a second, and I'm going to put another little pause here so that it has time to catch up with everything before I turn off. So what it should do is it should send a note on message. It should be note 48, so the C below middle C. Um, it'll do that for one second and it'll turn it off. So pretty boring. But there we go, that's the basis of it. Now, if you want to rerun this in the interpreter, you need to do this open port again because that with block will get rid of it. Great, so now we've, we have sent MIDI information down the wire to the device, right? And of course, lots of magic has happened in the background that's been done by RT MIDI, but the, you know, the basic MIDI message we have sent, we've controlled um, and we've sent down here. Right, I'm going to now go in here and we'll do some slightly more complex things. So let's think about altering a parameter. Now, when you're doing this, doing it in the Python interpreter is awkward. So I've made some little scripts. I made one called automate CC. And again, so this Python file, it will be run by the Python interpreter just exactly the same way as we have interactively, but I'll just run it all the way through from beginning to end. So we've got import time again and RT MIDI. We set up an output that we want. Again, we could be an input here and, and the MIDI controller could be affecting something on our computer, which is quite cool. Um, and it could be affecting anything, right? You don't need to use it for um, controlling music. You could use it for opening your email client or something like this if you wrote a MIDI script, a little Python script for doing it. Um, but in this case, we're sending MIDI information out. And then I've made a little dictionary so I can refer to this by name. Um, so OPZ1, uh, I've just set up for convenience that it'll open this port. It, so basically it just finds the correct port number based on the name. Um, and then we have the context, context manager again. We do note on, we set up a note on message. And then again, we're doing uh, channel five, which is the base channel, um, note on, uh, note 48, with a velocity and then a note off event. And then we're setting the filter to start with, we're gonna set the filter to zero. Now remember the control change message was B here, right? This is this was the, if you had this as the command, then B was the control controller change. And then to channel four, again, the base again, and we want parameter three. Now what is parameter three? Well, if we look at the, um, if we have a look at the OPZ manual, right? And we go down to section 21, we'll get to MIDI. And if we click incoming MIDI, we can see all the messages that the OPZ is listening for and we'll do something about it, right? And there's lots and lots of things. We can see all the CC values for it here. Now, parameter three is um, the filter cutoff. And this is what we're gonna be varying. And you can send that to any of the 16 channels on the, on the OPZ and uh, you can set um, it between zero, which is sort of, off and 127, which is on maximally. You can also do relative values, so change it relatively. And um, you can see here that there's there's all sorts of different different messages that you can send. You can automate absolutely everything, basically, right? So, or most most things, not quite everything, but most things. So this is a uh, this is pretty cool. This is where you find out where the, the the particular messages you're interested are. And so I specified it as three here, right? So um, it's going to be changing the filter cutoff. So we sent it, set that as zero to start with. Uh, we sleep for a little second. Then we do our note on. So we're keeping the note on here, sleeping for one second. And then we're going to start ramping the filter. And we're going to go to a filter sweep from zero, which in the OPZ, 50% is uh, the filters open. If you have less than 50%, it's a low pass filter. If you have higher than 50%, it's a high pass filter. So it's sort of DJ style filter. Um, and then we'll send this, We'll, we'll go up from zero all the way up to 126 because ranges in Python are not inclusive. Um, and it will steadily change this controller value, send it, and then sleep for 0.1 of a second, and then in increment it by one. So it will be then one, change that, 
see it for 0.1 seconds, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, and then all the way up. And it'll pause for 0.1 of a second. And remember, the note's playing continuously, then we'll send the note off event, and we'll sleep, and then we'll close everything down. So let's go Python automate. Great. So we automated that filter sweep. Um, yeah, and it was, you know, pretty straightforward to do using Python. And, you know, it sounded pretty, sounded pretty cool. And I actually use this a, a fair amount, this technique, to explore synth parameters on new devices that I get. I just make a little program that will go through and vary all the parameters. And I can sit down and listen and how they're changing and sort of do combinatorial effects with them. It's quite fun to, to be able to hear the sort of the extent of the synth engine. Now, the next thing, so I'm using Vim here, by the way, just, I didn't explain this, but Vim's just a text editor. Um, so I'm going to look at this, another script, I, script I've made called Chords. And um, in this case, I want to, you know, to be able to automatically play chords. And I've made, again, we import time and RT MIDI, and I made a little function that'll, that'll play a major chord. And it'll, you give it the root note, and then a, a MIDI out device, so, you know, the same as we defined before and then a delay, so how long it'll play the note for. And then what it'll do is it'll play the root note here, the tonic, right? Um, and it's in this time it's sending note on event to channel seven with a velocity of 112. And then it'll delay and it'll, it'll sleep for a delay. By default, it'll sleep for one, right? You can see that here for one second. Then it'll play the median, so the it's a third, a major third above the, the, the root note, the tonic note. And we do this by adding four semitones. Um, and then again to the same channel, and then we add a delay, and then we'll do the dominant here. So this is plus seven semitones, and this is the fifth above the, the, the tonic, so which is the, the, the dominant. And then we delay for another one second, and then um, we have another short delay, and then we turn everything off, right? And we sleep for a little second again, and that's that. So again, I'm setting up and I'm connecting to a particular device, the OPZ in this case, and then we're playing a major chord uh, with a, a, a root note, a tonic of 48. Um, so that again, that's the C below middle C, and then 60, so that's middle C, and then a, an octave above, and then we're going to do a very short uh, pulse at the end here. And, uh, and that's that. So let's see what that sounds like. So if we go Python chords, and then play that. Great. So you can hear this, you can see this, you can set this up and you can alter it. You could add different scales and add different card types and, uh, and you know, automate that and explore that. Now, of course, all of you, I imagine that there's some of you who are thinking that, well, you could use this to make a MIDI controller, right? Or you could use it to make a, you know, automate some exploration and you could use it for, for performance or you could use it in a video game or something to control the device. Oh, you could you could absolutely do all of this. And one of the reasons I've been looking at this recently, and I'm by no means an expert, um, I've been looking at it because I've been making a, a MIDI controller using a web MIDI, which is sort of an, uh, the uh, specification for MIDI that works in your browser. So I've made a web-based MIDI controller, and I'll make another vid video about that later and about web MIDI in general. Um, so thanks for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, please feel free, free to ask them in a comment, and hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Thanks very much.